Hi, I'm Jennifer Dins, and I'm here at the Cool Tool Studio. Today we're going to do a project called Tiny Birthstone Silver Charms. I hope you enjoy it. So here are the items we use for today's project. I've got texture here for the clay. We have um, art clay paste, art clay lump, the embeddables, the embeddable eyelets, cutters and embeddable prongs, water dish, two sizes of brushes, a thin and a thicker brush. We have two different colors of stones, snake clay roller, a stylus tool, a very fine tweezers, ultra clay pick, a tough card, our work surface, a sanding stick. So this project is actually one of my favorites because it can be done right at your dining room table um, with a minimum of supplies and a minimum cost. These are these little birthstone pendants that we're going to make. And um, we're going to make them two different ways, one with prongs and one without. So let's get started. First of all, I'm using a seven gram pack and I believe it's going to be enough for probably three of these. But let's do our first one and see how far we can go. So first of all, I'm going to take a little, a little bit bigger than a pea size piece of clay. And I'm going to roll it into a snake. Now the, the, the goal here is to make it rather thin. And see, sometimes that happens and that's okay. It gets gummed up a little bit. That's all right. The problem with rolling snakes is that you cannot lubricate your work surface or your snake roller because if you do, everything will just slide around. So you have to, it takes a little bit to get accustomed to working with rolling snakes. And sometimes it's just a gentle hand. Don't push too hard. I like to get mine really thin, but this project does not require that. I'm just trying to make some really tiny little pieces. Now look how thin I've been able to get that. This is nice. Now we have two types of, or two thicknesses of, of brush, and this is a little bit thicker brush that I like to use. So I'm gonna wet it, and I'm just gonna run it right down the middle. And then that way it's going to keep it a little bit damp for me while I work on this other part here. So I've got a little bit of extra clay here. I'm going to take a smaller than pea size bit of clay. I'm going to take my snake roller, flatten it just a bit, take my stylus tool, Gently poke a little, kind of an oval little hole there. And pop the embeddable right in there. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now here's our snake. And something about snakes that I think is really important, because some people say, oh, I just have such a hard time with them. You really have to get accustomed to handling them. And that means picking them up, manipulating them. I find my fingers get very sticky, so I use my brush. So I'm gonna start my coil, and I'm gonna use my brush to help me make that coil. So this is the base. I think maybe twice around is the base. Now I'm gonna actually come up on top of that base, and if you take a look at this, now it has a little three-dimensional look to it. Taking my ultra clay pick, I'm just gonna give a little, a little cut here. I'm gonna take this piece away. It's a little rough there, so what we're gonna do is water, tiny bit of water. Just fix this up here and then a little bit of paste fix that 
fill that in. Okay. Now I'm not really happy with that divot. And instead of just redoing it, I'm going to show you how to just take a little bit more lump clay here, rolled another bit of a snake, cut that little piece off. And I'm going to pop it right in there. That's the beauty of metal clay. You don't always have to completely redo. Everything is fixable. Okay, so now make sure that you take any extra clay. It's got to get wrapped up again because snake rolling requires very, very fresh clay. I take my brush here and kind of go underneath this and put it on a tough card. All right, so I've I made this as perfect as I dare because I don't want to overdo the clay. Now, at this stage of the game, um, we've got our prong set in a little chunk of clay here, and that doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be popped right in the middle. But at this point, I'm going to put in this other embeddable, and this is the eyelet. And the eyelets are made out of fine silver, and they will... Um, fire quite nicely with the clay, but there's something you need to remember when you're using an eyelet. And by the way, these are great not just for um, bales, but they're also good for attaching other elements as well. So I'm going to put the eyelet kind of in the middle here, and you'll see that it's popping into the, the center of my little donut, and that's okay. That's what I want it to do. This is my little repair, and I'm going to kind of use that as maybe a little decorative element there, too. So you see that popping through the middle. That is good because what that means is it's in the clay where it needs to be. When the clay shrinks, it will shrink away from this eyelet. So it's very important that we push the eyelet in enough that just the bottom of the little, little circle there is touching the top of our clay. That way, once it fires, It'll, it'll recede a little bit, but it's sunken in there enough that it won't break off or come out. So now I'm going to take my little piece here, and the clay is probably still damp, so just be careful of it while you're picking it up with your, with your tweezers. And I'm going to just pop it right in the center. And what's really neat about this project is you don't want to, to uh, get rid of that little extra ring from the middle donut. It looks kind of neat to have this, the concentric circling in there. So now I'm just going to do a final little bit of smoothing. And I'm going to take this and it's ready to go on my hot plate. Take one last look. Now I didn't do this quite perfect. My prongs aren't, aren't lined up the way they should be and, and that's okay because I am not a perfectionist. I just want to make something nice here. So this is going to go on the hot plate. So while our first one is on the um, mug warmer drying, we're going to do this same project a different way. This time we're going to set the stone in clay. And I will show, there's many, many ways to do this. I have taken classes from several instructors on different techniques for stone setting. There's a lot of different tools for stone setting, and that's great. I choose the path of least resistance, <laughs> and this is the way that I like to do stones, especially the, the round ones. They're very easy to do this way. So make a little pea-sized lump and poke a little hole in it with your stylus. Turn your stone upside down, take the bottom right into that hole that you just made, your snake roller and push until the stone hits your work surface. Okay. Now we're going to take that cutter and look from the very top 
Make sure it's centered. Pop it out of our cutter and we're going to let that dry. fact, this is actually going to go on, I'm going to put this on the mug warmer along with the other project. So that's on the mug warmer. And now we're taking another little bit bigger than pea size again. And we're going to roll. If you want to ever practice this, just pick up some polymer clay. In fact, this is a really cute polymer clay project too, but if you want to practice rolling snakes, polymer clay is the way to go. That way you get the feel of it. What I like to do, just as a hint, I take my fingertips and I have them just over the edge of the clay. So when this thing hits my surface, when the, when the snake roller hits the surface, my fingers actually are touching the surface and the snake roller is not. I know some people use the slats to do their snakes and I think that's a great idea too. This is the way I learned and this is the way I really enjoy doing it. So we've got our snake nice and thin. I'm not going to push that because I don't want to go too thin. Okay, so I'm going to take this thicker brush again and run it down. And really what this does is just ensures that when I start to curl it into the, uh, the spiral, it won't crack on me. Because like I said, I don't want to be, I don't want to be working with this clay too much and I don't want to overwork the clay. All right. So last time I didn't do this on my tough card. I'm going to do it right on my tough card here. <clears throat> These are Cool Tools new tough cards. They're darker so we can see our work better and actually that's kind of a nice idea. So again, using my brush instead of my fingers, I'm starting my circle twice around to the bottom and then up around again to make it a little more 3D. See, there I am. It's almost like a, it is like a donut. I don't know, I must be hungry. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my brush right here, use my clay pick, cut. There we go. So now I've got my, my beginnings here. This one is a little bit bigger, but that's okay. And of course, keep in mind that the clay will shrink these make really nice uh, birthstone pendants, Mother's Day, Grandmother's. You can collect a bunch of them for all the babies. So this is set to go. And at this stage of the game is where I want to put my eyelid in. Just like last time, grab the eyelet with your fine tweezers. I'm going to put it in this way right in the center and I'm going to see it poke through which is good. I'm going to make sure that it's buried enough in the clay so when that clay shrinks and pulls away it's not going to pop out on me. All right push that down just a little push that up a little and we will be refining these, of course, once they're dry, so. Okay. There. All right, so this one's ready for the hot plate. So I've taken my stone off the dryer, off the coffee warmer, and now I need to sand it. So I'm gonna use this sanding stick. And what I wanna do is I want to get it close to the stone, but not too close. We don't want to lose uh, the integrity of the clay that's, that's actually going to capture this stone. So I'm going to sand around. And I love these, um, these sanding sticks because uh, I know Cool Tools has the spongy sanders these sanders th th these work well for sanding 
because they're rigid and the rigidity helps me keep everything aligned. Like right now I want 90 degrees um, from the bottom of this so that the sides are, are totally even and straight. So that's why I love working with these and I'm using this tough card here to capture my, my crumbs, so to speak, and I will reconstitute those. I like to take them and make paste for myself. So I'm going around and gently sanding down. Okay. Now, this looks pretty good. I'm pretty clean on my edges here so that I'm not going too close to my stone. A little bit more. And now I'm going to grab the base that I just made off the hot plate. So I'm done sanding the stone. I got it pretty close here, nice and tight. And then here's, here's my base piece, but I think I'm going to have to trim it just a little bit because I want this stone to fit nicely in there and it's just a little squishy. Although that looks very nice as well, but I'm going to show you how to do this. It's real easy. I'll take my, I have a sharp blade here. I'm going to take this blade And I'm just going to trim gently around my edges here. And because this piece isn't completely hard and dry, there's a little bit of give there that allows me, see I can scoop out some of that material so that I can make this stone fit nicely in here. So let's see. Oh yeah, that sits better. I got a little bit more material to remove over here. So I've removed enough material, and you can see here my little shavings, and those will go back in the in the paste jar as well. I've removed enough material there that my stone fits. So what I'm going to do at this point is take a little bit narrower brush, kind of wet this inside, make sure that my embeddable is still sunken in there. Now it's it's flopped a little, but that'll be fine once I put the stone in, it'll be okay. Make sure that's tucked in there nice and tight. So I'm gonna wet the inside here. Take some paste. Kind of be a little bit generous here with my paste. And then I'm going to take my stone setting that I have sanded that's dry. I'm going to wet that as well and add a little bit of paste to that too. Not too much. It's not re required that it's a ton. And I'm going to pop it right into that hole. And if you need to, you can use that snake roller again. Get it nice and flat in there. All right. And this will go back on the, more, on the mug warmer. So I've pulled the first one off. And this is the one that we did with the prongs. And it's dry, but boy, it needs some, it needs some, uh, some polishing up here. So I'm going to take my sanding stick again. I'm going to refine the back a little bit. The sides, got a little bit of paste. So I'm going to gently remove the excess paste. Any brush marks? I think I left a couple of brush marks in there. We don't want that. Make it nice and round so it highlights my round stone. And again, like I said before, what I love about this is this groove in here is just another design element. That's okay. So it doesn't need to be filled in with paste or anything. I mean, this is pretty much ready to be fired. So we'll fire this one along with the other one when we complete that one. But just this a little bit of refining and then this, is, this one's ready to be fired. All right, so I've pulled my second uh, little charm off the mug warmer. And again, I'm gonna just take some time and refine it. I wanna refine the back a little bit and make it nice and flat. Doing it on my dark tough card again, which is nice. See where I'm going with it. And I want to kind of level out this bezel here too. I want to make it 
somewhat match the material around it just so we have that nice little groove in there and be very gentle all right so we're ready to fire i have my two charms sitting here on my firing board i've got a a, a soldering or a kneeling pan with pumice my firing boards and then i have my torch i also have a timer next to me here so that i can make sure that once it hits the salmon color um, I will fire these for two minutes. Uh, anything bigger, you should probably fire for a little bit longer. So here we go. Now, initially, the binder will burn away and these will flame up. So keep your eyes open for that flame. But don't be alarmed. Once that burns away, those flames will go out. Now we want to get it to a nice salmon color. And make sure that you're covering, if you're doing multiple pieces, make sure you're covering both pieces with your flame. I've got a nice little salmon color happening here and I'm going to start my timer. You want to be careful your embeddable pieces can and do melt so always make sure you keep your eyes on your work as you're soldering or excuse me make sure you keep your eyes on your work as you're torch firing because it's happened to me before where i've gone a little too aggressive and bloop the prongs melted or the embezzle or the embedded eyelet melted and you don't want that to happen so you gotta keep your eyes. I try and keep the flame close, but not necessarily on the eyelets. So just keep that in mind when you're using eyelets. They're very easy to work with, especially when you're torch firing, but you just have to be patient and you have to take your time and be very, very mindful of where that heat is while you're, while you're firing. If you do this enough, you get accustomed to color and you get accustomed to the color that metal turns when it heats and the, and the, the color that metal turns right before it melts. <laughs> so keep that in mind as well. We have about 25 seconds left here and we're doing good. Our stones are fireable. So you see that turns a little bit orange there, but that will come back to green once we're done here. And we're good. I'm leaving these to cool here on the firing pan. A uh, couple things to remember when you use stones. I'm reluctant to quench. I do not like to drop a hot piece into water. I don't want a stone to crack. I don't want my piece to crack. So I'm gonna leave it here to cool. And then once it's cool, we'll go on to the next step. So here are my two pieces cooled off. And of course our stone is already in this one. We have to set the stone in this one. But before I do that, I just grabbed a quick brass brush here and I'm gonna just brush them lightly. Is it looks white and that's actually the molecules of silver kind of standing up, so to speak. So we're using the brush to give it a little burnish and to bring back the shine. So I'm gonna do that on both of these and then we're gonna set our stone. All right, so I've grabbed my next stone here. This is actually a, um, an Alexandrite Fireable CZ um, from Cool Tools. I love this color. This is the June birthstone. Anyway, and this one is of course set after firing, which is nice because if you do have stones that can't be fired, use the embeddables and you can fire them that way. So I'm gonna take this stone, I'm gonna flip it over so that the bottom is pointing upwards take my piece and this is like so not technical but this is what works for me and i'll take my embeddable i'm going to press down till i hear that snap flip it up and believe it or not it is actually set now i'm going to take some some pliers i have here just to make sure that everything is lined up there's a little groove in each prong and that's where the the girdle or the 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 round part of the CZ 
rests. So that's right in there. That rests right in there. And I'm taking my, prom my pliers and just gently giving it a little squeeze to make sure it's captured that stone. And there you go. So I have it set two ways. We've got it set in within the clay, within the silver, and we have it prong set. So now I'm going to throw these in the tumbler and we'll be back. All right, so our two pieces are out of the tumbler and here they are. And here are some pieces that I had made earlier. And honestly, seven grams of clay, this is leftover clay from the seven grams and look what we've made. These would make great gifts birthstone pendants. I'm a grandma myself and I would love to have these with my grandchildren's birthstones in them. I hope you enjoyed our little charm project. This is one of my favorites. It's an inexpensive way to create a gift for a mother or a grandmother or anybody that likes to collect birthstone items and it's easy and inexpensive. Thanks for watching.